Is Travis Scott the last real superstar in rap? I feel like Playboy Cardi might be that one. And I'm not even just, you know, meat gargling right now. It's because you've seen with Kanye, right? He's been his right hand man, not Travis Scott. Cardi, Cardi, the, we just talked about his effect on features where basically all those songs chart really well just because of the hype of his fan base he's got a cult following probably the strongest one in rap nowadays now are we talking about like is he the same level of brand friendliness as Tra travis scott or like commercial ability is that even a word that might be not true but cardi definitely i feel like is like the next person who's going to take over and be the major influence in rap because travis scott's kind of fading a little bit i've noticed that a lot of people just like don't care about the posts um just like his lore and whatnot but like anything cardi you already know blows up so let's see what what's good youtube it's i used just to be pay has to say I used to be paying today i'm back with another video and in this video i'm going to be talking about why travis scott might just be the last real superstar of rap but before i get into that make sure you leave a like comment and subscribe do all those things it helps me out a ton recently there's been a lot of conversations surrounding superstars and rap or really the lack thereof pretty much every rap personality has talked about this conversation including myself i've made videos like there is no new drake or another video that i titled rap is getting older where i basically talked about this whole phenomenon of like our superstars just being older than they were in the yesteryears right a lot of our superstars today are even the same exact superstars of yesteryear like these guys are pushing 40. They're is it really up to drake though or these major artists to put on the next artists that are super talented in a big way because before how was drake put on by lil wayne how was travis scott put on by kanye how was uzi put on but that was by don ken whatever um and dj drama cardi by asap rocky so like it's kind of up to the people to give the cosigns and i just don't know i mean drake's ovo sweatshop that everybody talks about like he hasn't done a good job of promoting his artist travis scott i mean we saw what happened with sofago is he really that involved i know he's done well with don toliver cardi's doing well with opium but i don't know if ken and carson and destroy lonely really have the talent to like become a next level drake you know what i'm saying or like even a the next cardi i truly don't um i'm not hating and they could end up doing it prove me wrong please but i'm just saying it's up to the the all-time greats to like inspire the talent and train them to become that pushing 50 and they're still the top dogs in rap they're still the guys in the middle of the culture they're still the guys that are number one and it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of young guys who are coming up with this potential to be a major superstar and it kind of feels like travis scott is the last real like real superstar in rap now i really quickly want to clarify a little bit what i mean by superstar because that's kind of a vague word um i don't just mean any star because Everyone's a star, right? Everyone has millions of followers on Instagram. Everyone has 20 million monthly listeners on Spotify or more. Like all of these rappers are doing their thing. There's a lot of stars in rap. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But when I say superstar, I'm talking a little bit higher of a regard. I want to put it, you know, a little bit higher than just your regular old star. So I'm going to put a little, you know, a little list of like clarifications or a little list of kind of markers that you need to check off before I'm like, okay, that person's a superstar. The first being selling 100K first week easily. Like that should be something that you do consistently or something that we don't even have to think about, right? If somebody's predicting your sales, they're never going to say anything below 100. I feel like that's just a star though, because a lot of labels can easily get 100K for their artists. Um, I feel like superstar you might have to hit 200 easily, right? I mean, Kanye did it independently, but if you're signed to a major, you gotta hit 200 to be a superstar. Cause to the big dogs or whatever, the academics said a long time ago, that's 100K, but like that's, that's the top 1% of artists. But if you wanna be a superstar, you wanna get the 0.1%, which is 200K. Okay, like they know, okay, even if the rollout is bad or there is no rollout, that person is selling 100K first week. It's not even a discussion. 
The next thing that I really think is important to be a superstar is being known worldwide. Now, this doesn't mean you have to be Bad Bunny where you're a superstar in every country. That's not what I mean, all right? I'm not saying you gotta be able to sell out stadiums in, in Puerto Rico and then go to France and like that's not what I'm saying, okay? I'm, I'm being realistic. Rap is still a very much American genre, but you need to be able to go to these other countries and be known and have fans and actually be able to tour in these other countries as well. Maybe not in stadiums, but in good sized arenas. And I don't just mean going to Turkey for $400,000 to do a one-off performance because a lot of rappers that have kind of fallen off like to do that. It's low key like a method for falling off rappers to go overseas because oftentimes they don't. It's just like the NBA, <laughs> like Dwight Howard or something. Like when you're not good enough to play in the NBA, you just go overseas and you start destroying everyone else. Hit these markets when they're at their peak and like, you know, like the baby in 2019, you know, the, he might not have hit like a market like Taiwan or something. I'm just making this up. He might have, but he might not have gone to Taiwan in 2019. But if he goes back now, they might give him 500 K because fans are wanting to see the baby out there and he has a lot of hits. Like you get what I'm saying. So I don't just mean doing a one-off performance for a big bag that you wouldn't be able to get in the United States. I mean, actually go on tour worldwide in relatively decent sized arenas and then obviously the last point is being able to go on tour in the united states and sell out these nba sized arenas these arenas that hold like 14 to 20 000 people because if you can't sell out a tour in the united states how are you a superstar if you can't sell out in your own country bro like i don't know if i can call you a superstar and again, you know, people sell out tours on different levels. Like, you know, you can do venues that are like 5,000 or, you know, 3,000. But I'm talking specifically about these NBA sized arenas, the Staples Center, Madison Square Garden, the Toyota Center, like these bigger arenas. If you can't do that, I can't really call you a superstar. Being a superstar, though, I'm trying to figure out who can actually sell out stuff like that. Because I said Cardi before. And honestly, the antagonist tour was probably the most hyped up and like talked about tour other than maybe utopia because he was going to travis scott was going to perform it in the egyptian pyramids but i'm trying to figure out i mean uzi with pink tape might have i feel like uzi might be a superstar right he pretty easily sold like at least during the ea days he, he's definitely not at his peak anymore um, he was though and he you know got just one a rock he still always hits or somehow gets a billboard hit is there anybody else like little baby and little dirk uh, i don't know bro. I, I never got behind that street rap genre but um other people like them a lot so doesn't like inherently make you better than any of the other rappers and you know superstardom doesn't necessarily mean that you just have the best music ever but i think in my opinion that when we have a bunch of superstars running around in rap old and new it just makes everything a lot more fun in my opinion it's really fun to see these artists competing on the charts okay i'm gonna drop my album maybe a month before you drop yours we gonna see who sells more i think that's really cool was yeet about to do that because he went on a tour and it sold out pretty well but I feel like he's past his peak a little bit. But he might get it back. I don't know. Future. But he's older. So I feel like he was a superstar. But again, he's from like even before. Are him and Drake the same age? Drake. Future might be fucking 40. Future age. 40. He ain't even pushing 40. He is 40. Jesus. Ooh, think of like even if you drop it on the same day think of like the the 50 cent and the kanye thing back with graduation like that's really cool those are always really fun times or when these artists are competing on the charts with their songs or maybe you're getting two superstars collabing like kanye and jay-z like i think i talked about this with you seen i do feel like from the last generation of like 2016 to 2018 the only true superstars that have lasted are Uzi and Cardi. And that's why they're the two main guys that I talk about because those are the ones I really like, but like XSS Tentacion and Juice World, they were also supposed to be superstars, but they passed away. And I think they might have even been bigger than Cardi and Uzi right now. Um, and they were at the time. It's just they passed away. So that kind of, uh, what's the word? Like mitigated the next generation too because now they're supposed to be the inspiration for the next like the ken carson's and uzi we don't even know if destroy lonely and ken carson would have even been a thing if 
X was still here because then Cardi might not have been as influential as what he has right now where he controls the underground. Like for all we know, it, everyone could still be on emo rap. <laughs> like these are always extremely fun times in rap in my opinion. When there's just major star power, rap is dominating the charts, that rap is dominating the Billboard Hot 100, rap is dominating pop culture. Like I think those are really fun times in my opinion. Or you even got the old guard going against the new guard when Drake Cole dropped his album the same time as Kanye West. Like I think that stuff is really really interesting. And honestly, if you're looking for kind of a time period for this, Think back to like the early to mid 2010s. And honestly, this might just be me being a sucker for that time period because that's what I grew up on. That's when I was a kid and that's when I was really, you know, first, well, not first enjoying rap, but that was really when I was like becoming really aware of what was happening in the hip hop scene really as a listener rather than just like kind of it playing and, you know, it's always being there. But I mean, really paying attention to the genre and what's happening. The early to mid 2010s was a really good time for superstardom in rap, in my opinion. We had the older guys, we had... Kanye, we had Fit, which is crazy because Kanye's still around. We had Kanye, we had 50 Cent, but he was kind of like, you know, towards the end of his. We need Kanye to sign somebody and pass the torch. I know he already passed it on to Travis Scott. Travis Scott needs to pass it on to somebody. Your Uzi needs to pass it on to somebody. Cardi needs to. I know he's trying. Drake definitely needs to. Ugh. I feel him though. It all comes back to the aura, as in. Not in the gay way like everybody uses on the internet, but actually the internet's so big and so distributed that everybody got their own little like underground favorite artist or content creator or streamer or whatever it is. But like there's certain people like Kanye, you can't, it's hard to replicate. That might just be the issue. Nowadays with the internet being so big and everybody watching their own shit and YouTube channels, like it's hard to really congregate everyone into one big place, kind of like a Mr. Beast, but of music where like that is just the dude who everybody cares about or everybody cares about their album. But right now we're still caring about the last era. They just need to go away and let, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they just need to go away and let this new generation finally take over and see what they do. And if, if no one takes over, then they can come right back after five years and be like, okay guys, y'all tried, but you just couldn't do it. Superstardom. We had Jay-Z, we had Eminem, we had uh, Lil Wayne, like we had major players that had been around for a while now at this point. And then we also had the new guard who was coming in. We had Drake, we had Kanye, we had Nicki, we had J. Cole. And these guys not only rose during this era, but established, the, established themselves as the superstars of this era. So I thought it was really cool to have the old guard and the new guard at the exact same time collabing. We got songs like Forever. Like th this was just a really good era, in my opinion, for you know, superstardom and, and rap really being at the top of pop culture. Now, of course, I know somebody's gonna be like, forever came out in 2009, whatever. You get my point. That era was really good for superstardom. But on the other hand, I but that was also before social media really took over and made it harder for people to get mega, mega famous. Like who is the most famous female right now? It's still like Kylie Jenner, but that's coming off of what, like, cable tv with from the kardashians i guess they're really social social media centric but i don't know if we'll ever see a drake bro another one it's just too segregated the the internet i will say this there is a good argument for rap kind of falling off and like out of the limelight like there's some interesting things that could be said there about like kind of gatekeeping rap again and restarting and kind of resetting rap culture. I think that's a very interesting topic and I might revisit that in another video, but just I also think that we just let a lot of people become famous, even though they were kind of trash. I mean, the songs were cool. Like, let's be honest, Lil Pump. I mean, again, he had some bangers, but looking back, I mean, it's trash music, like no substance whatsoever, or like smoke perp. We had a whole generation of just kind of garbage. I know there was definitely some good highlights in there, like Lil Skies, X, Juice World, Uzi, Cardi, whatever. But like, there was a lot of like Lil Xan. There's a lot of trash, and we we kind of ruined it by the letting the fans make dumbass people famous. And I'm not even talking about the rappers. I'm talking about like. Supreme Patty, Bad Baby, like making all the dumb degenerate shit blow up. And then kind of the culture died because we weren't putting on real artistry.
just in general, I think that when we have a bunch of superstars in rap, it's just really fun. But Travis really does seem to be like the last guy to fully break into that level of superstardom. Maybe you could consider Cardi B, but I kind of put Cardi B in this weird gray area because like, I feel like she could be a rap superstar and she kind of is, but she kind of isn't because she really only has one album and I don't believe she's ever been on like a full tour. So I, I like, she would meet the qualifications. She would be able to sell out these tours. At least I think maybe I'm wrong. I feel like the female rappers are killing it right now. That's why there's a lot of female artists trying to get pushed by labels in the underground, um, like Ice Spice, Lotto, Doja Cat, even though people claim that Doja Cat's not a rapper, she's a pop artist, whatever. She's got a hip hop audience, in my opinion. I think she's fire. Um, but like they can all sell out stadiums, at least, at least Doja Cat. She's a real superstar, but I guess maybe again, if you don't consider her a rapper, Cardi B, she was a superstar, um, still kind of is, but more as a brand rather than music. Like I think her music is kind of garbage, but again, it's not, I'm not that audience, so I don't know, but Ice Spice might be one. Hmm wrong and maybe that's why she's never done it but i think she would be able to consistently sell over 100k and do these tours she just hasn't done it so she's just kind of like in this weird gray area for me so i really do believe that like travis scott is the last person to fully break in to rap superstardom and even if you look at travis scott's albums uh to speak more so on the music travis scott has like cultural moments with his albums like everything kind of stops when travis scott drops an album which is really impressive because we live in such a fast era everything but see, Uzi had that with Eternal Take. Cardi had that with Whole Lot of Red. Like, even if it had a lot of hate or whatever, like, I do feel like it had a cultural moment, just like Astro World and uh, Utopia. In fact, Uzi actually streamed more than Travis Scott's Astro World and Utopia with Eternal Take. So, who really had more of a moment? Travis Scott's just really good at selling merch. And then Cardi, I feel like, a whole lot of red again. And then this next album, like, everybody's waiting on the YouTube drop. Like, rap is kind of stopping completely. Maybe not to the same mainstream level as Travis Scott, because he has, I don't know, he has, like, pop culture, like, the Kardashian audience. And, you know, he's done collabs with Nike, McDonald's. Like, but he, he, I feel like he's right, though. I don't know if we'll ever have, like, a mainstream commercial artist like Travis Scott or Drake is fast 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 instant gratification TikTok, all this stuff uh, ig reels and youtube shorts like everything moves so fast but when travis scott drops an album everyone kind of stops and pays attention the albums utopia and astroworld have been some of the biggest cultural moments in hip-hop in recent history but not only that not only do they get people paying attention and stop everything and everyone's paying attention to travis scott not only that they also have the quality to match and this mixture of like quality and cultural impact is something that I think Travis Scott is the only person really doing right now. He's really the only one that's mixing on both that extremely high level of quality and that cultural influence. Even when you look at the other big dogs, you look at Drake, the last album to do that for him was probably Views in my opinion. Again, he's had the cultural impact, but the quality just has not been on the level of a Utopia or Astroworld. If you look at Kanye, you could... All he tried with honestly never mind to hit like a different audience with the house music. Kanye, Kanye still gets the cultural impact though with vultures. Like everybody in rap stops, but and he just got a number one song with Carnival, bro. But he was already a superstar before Travis Scott. So argue Donda, but I wouldn't say that the quality of Donda matches up to Astro World or Utopia. I would say the last album for Kanye to do both of those things that I mentioned, that cultural impact, that stopping everything. He's going to say St. Pablo, huh? Around it and also having that extremely high quality is the life of Pablo. And then if you want to look at Kendrick, it's probably damn. Um, but still, I really don't think right now in the moment, anybody's really doing it like Travis when it comes to his albums and their impact and their quality. And this isn't me trying to say like, oh, Travis Scott is so much better than Drake and Kanye and Kendrick. That's not the, the goal of me bringing that up. My goal here is to really illustrate to you how big of a star, how big of a superstar Travis Scott really is. And it just doesn't seem like anybody at the moment on the rise has really the potential to kind of do this or really to get to that point. And, you know, the closest we've prob probably gotten to this as of recently is Lil Baby. Lil Baby does extremely well on his numbers. His albums have both the, the last two. Of 
as we talked about yesterday on stream though when we were talking about how kanye was exposing the streaming platforms where basically an artist can't really make that good of money on streams yes if you're huge like little baby or travis scott but like for probability's sake is it even worth it like with the point zero 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 one percent chance that you become a superstar is it even possible or even making enough sustainable income to be an artist in rap music other than signing to a, a label and then that's not sustainable either because then you got to sign another deal to get your advance so that you can whatever like is it even worth it that might be the reason is it worth it to be a rapper and that's why a lot of people are turning down these deals or not even trying after they realize that there's not much money in streaming um and that's why we don't have the next superstar because they just all found other ways to make money and more bread like becoming a live streamer like kai sanat or something like that two of them have either come close to or sold more than 200k first week so his album sales are there he has a bunch of hits and he's pretty known worldwide he even did the whole like world cup thing that was really cool like shout out to Lil baby i just don't consider him a superstar because if you were around last year paying attention to things, you saw that Lil Baby canceled a lot of shows because of poor. Because he's always been mid. And people never listen. Be like, oh, he's better than Gunna. Psych, bruh. Gonna, gonna taught him how to rap. He's his father. Ticket performance. He wasn't selling out these major arenas that he was booking. And I'm sorry, I just can't really consider you a superstar if you can't even tour in your own country in these major stadiums. Of course he can tour, but you get what I'm saying. If you can't sell out these arenas, not stadiums, sorry, I might've said the word stadiums. If you can't sell out these arenas, not stadiums, stadiums is OD. Let me say that again, just in case I said stadiums, because I think I did. If you can't sell out these major arenas, I can't consider you a big superstar. You're a star, and you know, maybe some other people can, and you're right there, Lil Baby's right there. You know, if you call Lil Baby a superstar, I'm not gonna be upset. I just can't consider him a superstar if he can't t tour in the continuous United States in these 14 to 20,000 sized arenas consistently. But after Lil Baby, like who's next to really even consider? Maybe Lil Uzi, Uzi sold like 300K, right before the pandemic with Eternal Take, and then the pink tape sold really well as well, but like he has never, he better say Cardi, brah. I feel like Cardi got that moment right now. Never really done like a major arena tour in the United States. He, you know, Uzi did go on tour with the pink tape, but it was a little bit smaller. And then of course, Eternal Take kind of ruined everything. And Uzi probably would have become a superstar if the pandemic didn't happen. And you know, there was a tour that actually happened for Eternal Take because it probably would have went crazy. But after that, what, like Cardi? Car so did the pandemic ruin Uzi's career? That might be another topic right there. Cause that kind of like put everybody on the back burner, especially with Uzi's personality. He's so active, you know, it's got a lot of personality more so than any other rapper and like the shoulder roll shit. So if he went on tour for eternal to take, would, would he be like the Cardi right now? That's a good question. He needs to sue China for starting that shit. Cardi only has one album that's sold over 100K. Now, mind you, he only has three projects, but like there just hasn't been enough consistency from Cardi. And he was supposed to go on tour in these bigger arenas early or not earlier, but like at the end of 2023 and that never happened. So I guess we'll just wait and see with Cardi. Maybe I'm not going to completely write it off, but just at the moment, I wouldn't. Yeah, I don't think he's proven that he's a superstar just yet. Just like where people were talking about the features that hit num uh, billboard placements. If once he does it himself, hits like top 10 by himself, which I don't know if he would even want to because I don't know. I feel like he always drops like a little bit more niche music than then maybe he should if he wanted to be as big as possible again so that he can keep his cult or maybe he doesn't do that on purpose and it's just like that's his personality just do something different but you can't really say he's a superstar just yet until he does it by himself yes the vultures listening parties are selling out but and they, i think they're arenas or stadiums whatever they are but he's just the sidekick to kanye right now and say he's a superstar um we can look at like Lil Durk 
Dirk has sold 100K over his last two projects, but Dirk is not doing these major arenas in the United States. I've been to Dirk's concert. It was like a 5,000 seater, which is no, no, it's not disrespect. Not being a superstar isn't a bad thing. I'm just speaking kind of objectively on these people's level of star power. And I just don't see Dirk ever really becoming that big, big superstar. Maybe he could. I like Dirk a lot, but I, I just don't really see it. And then what, like maybe Meg Thee Stallion? Meg Thee Stallion has the hits commercially. She's she has like three number one hits or something like that. But albums wise, I don't believe she's ever sold over 100K. I will correct myself if I'm wrong, but I don't think she has. And I don't really see Meg Thee Stallion selling out these major arenas. Maybe she could down the line, but at the moment, I don't really see that. And then after I mean, is it really th most artists can't sell arenas or stadiums, right? But maybe that's because we're kind of spoiled with festivals like Rolling Loud. Even EDM has a lot of things where it's more than one person, like it's a whole lineup. And so why would you spend however many on a much dollars on a ticket, like a hundred or 200 to go see your favorite artists when you could see your top five favorite artists in one weekend for like, 300 to 600 dollars for not much more than what you would have paid for the ticket so maybe that's the reason that a lot of people can't tour in my opinion whereas before like rolling loud in the festivals i feel like you know you would have gone to a, a bunch of different concerts because you're not going to see them regardless and you want to see them perform after that maybe young boy young boy's album sales have sales have fallen off but that's just because he's been dropping so much and also young boy probably not i'm not gonna say probably he possibly could do a tour in these big arenas because he hasn't been on tour since 2019 and i know it's kind of quiet for young boy right now but he still does have a crazy insane fan base so that's very possible for him i i could see him doing a major tour once he gets off house arrest so maybe well you know the jury's not out yet on young boy and then after that what like ice spice Ice Spice has like, I mean, she's super popular. I don't think Ice Spice will ever be a superstar. And her ass is a superstar, bro. People might go to see that. I swear to God, most of these female rappers, I'm not trying to be that guy, but they, they might actually be richer if they were just OnlyFans people. <laughs> they were porn stars. Ice Spice will go crazy. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. And the way I described it earlier, no disrespect to Ice Spice, but like, it's just kind of slim pickings after you. Her music also isn't that good. So like, again, you got famous for music. Now switch over to being like an actress or something. I bet you that would work out. But the music, bro, they're watching it on mute. The music videos. You kind of look at the close, you know, the close competition after Lil Baby. And even those guys, I don't really see them necessarily becoming a superstar in the near future. Now, do I really think Travis Scott will be the last ever rap superstar? Probably not. Everything comes in cycles. Everything happens in a circle. Life is a big old circle. So there probably will be somebody down the line, but like in the foreseeable future, I really don't know. I really don't see anybody at the moment, but honestly, superstardom is getting a lot more like difficult to come by in all aspects of like media, not just rap. It's harder to come by and, you know, in acting and, and also what I'm finding is yes, it is harder to become a superstar for anything because again, the internet's so segregated, but I made that point earlier, but also at the same time, superstars because of the internet, it's so fast. Like remember Charlie D'Amelio or like Alex Earl or any of these people on TikTok that became like the person that represents or like Mr. Beast, it happens so fast within like a matter of months that this person blows up and gains millions and millions of followers wherever. Whereas back in the day, like Kanye and Drake, yeah, they blew up relatively quickly for their times, but it took years and years and years to build up. So we could very well see, like we have no idea who the next superstar is, like Yeet back in 2021. But then all of a sudden, like this one person comes out of nowhere and we're like, who the hell is this? Where did he come from? And then they're the next superstar for the next three to five years. And they did it all within a matter of months, like laid the foundation. Athletics and in the NBA and all like it's really hard to be a superstar nowadays with the expansion of social media. Everyone sees everybody and that kind of spotlight that was reserved for just superstars. That little narrow spotlight has really widened and it's just gotten it so big to where it's like everyone's paying attention to so many different things. It's kind of hard to be a superstar nowadays and it's going to be a lot more difficult as we move into the future. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention some of the guys who 
were possibly on their way to being major superstars that just ended up losing their lives pretty early. Somebody like XXXTentacion, major star potential. He had a crazy fan base. He was, I think he sold over 100K on one of his uh, projects before. And he was just kind of rapidly growing with his fan base. He could do a lot of different things and he really appealed to a lot of different. He was blackballed and he was still selling over 100K and not even signed to a major. He was with Empire. So yeah, dude would have been the next superstar same thing with juice world already were superstars in my opinion so we might just be fucked the culture took him down and then ruined it for everybody else actually juice world died of his own doing kind of because of the drugs but i guess it was the drug culture before he even got in it different people especially the youth the youth attached themselves to this guy like white on rice um, I don't know if he would have been a major, major superstar. Some people like to say, oh, he was going to be the next Drake. I don't know about all that. I feel like that might be a little bit of a stretch, but he definitely had some potential to potentially get into that superstardom lane. Lane, somebody like Pop Smoke as well, had a lot of potential and was really, really massively growing before he ended up uh, tragically passing away. And then even somebody like Juice World, who was damn near pretty close to becoming a superstar juice world was selling crazy numbers hundreds hundreds of thousands on his albums and of course again had that crazy kind of sound i'm pretty sure juice world already sold multiple albums of 100k and even when he was passed away over 100k maybe even over two but x i feel like i mean i live in south florida and so i kind of experienced it firsthand of the type of concerts he threw even underground dude i'm telling you this shit would get shut down because it would get so packed that like a club there'd be just a crowd of people blocking multiple roads okay so wherever he went i'm telling you i think when he passed away there was a whole like parade or or like movement walkathon whatever down rodeo boulevard wherever it was by no jumper so like his fans were crazy i think he was for sure i, I could say a hundred percent certainty that he would have been a superstar cloud fan base soundcloud adjacent fan base that was just going insane for him and then of course you know he had his untimely passing so maybe we just had one of these younger on the rise superstars and they ended up unfortunately you know meeting an untimely death and I'm going to end this video with another aspect of this that might be something I explore again further on into the future because I think this could be a really interesting conversation as well. Maybe superstardom as a whole is just kind of changing, right? Everything changes in life. It, it is a circle, but everything changes. And maybe we're just looking at superstardom in kind of an old way. Maybe superstardom will be completely different in five to 10 years. Maybe in 2035, a superstar won't be what it meant in 2020, which is probably, it sounds pretty likely, right? Maybe a superstar won't be somebody who's selling out these, these arenas and selling hundreds of thousands. Maybe a superstar will be somebody who can just hop on a live stream and get 600,000 people like that. Maybe that's what's- I was thinking that. Cause I was, I was thinking like when Cardi hopped on Aiden Ross's stream, there were 500,000 people ready to see that. However, it's really hard to get people to buy anything nowadays, like clothes or like merch or, you know, tickets. Cause again, they can go to a festival, but if they can hop on a live stream and people are watching that shit while in like screen recording, I feel like that's a superstar. So yeah, the definition of superstar might just be different because the culture is different. People aren't buying, I don't, I don't really go to concerts that much anymore, unless I'm getting fucked up, but it's not really about the artists that much.